Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the learning session. The subject is leadership and management. The chapter project management. So far, we've covered the project management concepts. We've studied the characteristics of a project. We've done importance of projects. We've uh, outlined the features of projects and baseline surveys. We've also illustrated the project life cycle. Today, subtopic number six, we are moving on to the project planning and organizing. Those are two things, project planning and organizing. We'll first begin with project planning. So far we know the meaning of project. Earlier on, we discussed the planning function. And we said that a plan is a predetermined course of action. So therefore, candidates, project planning is a process that begins with the development of a project charter. Project planning begins with what we call a project charter, development of a project charter. Project planning begins with the development of a project charter, a project charter. Before you embark on any project, then you need to have a plan which is a predetermined course of action. And project planning begins with the development of a project charter, which is just a high level description of the project. A project charter is a high level description of a project. A project charter is a high level description of a project. Description of a project. Okay? It is a document that is issued by the initiator of a project or the sponsor of a project that formally authorizes the existence of a project and provides a project manager with the authority to apply organizational resources to project activities. It's a document with information about a project, about the products, the service, or the results the project is intended to satisfy. And the project charter will contain things like the project purpose. These are the contents. Let me write contents of a project charter. What are the contents of a project charter? A project charter, which you've said is a description about uh, the details about the project, must have the purpose. Number one is a purpose, project purpose. What is the purpose of the project? So a charter will describe the purpose of the project. Then the Charter must also contain measurable project objectives. Measurable project objectives. Because we always say a project, an objective must be smart. It must be smart. It must be as measurable. All right? 
uh, measurable project uh, objectives, including the related criteria. Okay. A project charter will also contain requirements, project requirements. Project requirements, number four. Um, a project charter can also have, a, it will have a, a, a project description, it will have a, uh, boundaries, uh, description boundaries, it may also have key deliverables, key deliverables, uh, key deliverables, we can also have the uh, overall project, overall project risks or risk the overall project risk must also be contained in a project uh, charter. We can also have uh, milestones, project um, summary, uh, what we call summary milestone schedule. Summary milestone schedule. Summary milestone schedule. A summary milestone schedule. It may also contain the key stakeholders. Key stakeholders. Who are the key stakeholders? The, the project um, implementers, the project. Uh, we may also have the, 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 the sponsor of the project, the sponsors of the project, the, the and any other person who has an interest in the project. The government may also have an interest in the project. We may have the, the, the employees, uh, the persons who are expected to implement the project. We may have suppliers. We may also have uh, the members of the public. The, co the project charter should contain the key project stakeholders, all right? And uh, number eight, we can go on and on. And on number eight, uh, we have the uh, project uh, approval requirements. What are the project approval requirements? Project approval requirements. Before a project is undertaken, approval may be required from the authorities from the government, from the county government, uh, from uh, licensing bodies um, like NEMA and all that. So project approval requirements may also be contained in a project uh, charter. It's important also to document here the assigned project manager, assigned project manager, Assigned project manager. This is the one who is to oversee the implementation of the project. Suppose we ensure that uh, workers are assigned tasks, resources are assigned to the uh, project, is to organize the project, is to carry out um, a control function in relation to the, to the project, and so on. Then lastly, we have the name of the project sponsor. Name of the project sponsor. The project name of the project sponsor or sponsors who are expected also to authorize the charter. And candidates, I need to mention that the project charter um, ensures a common understanding by the stakeholders of the key deliverables, the milestones, the roles, 
and the responsibilities of each and everyone involved in the project. And once the project charter is approved by the project sponsors, then the project is considered to be officially authorized and work on developing a more detailed project plan can commence. And candidates, the project management plan or the, I can say the project management plan varies depending on the application and the complexity of the project. So before a project plan is developed, it's important to have the project charter in place which you have seen is signed or approved by the project sponsor here at the end. It's a charter. It's a document. All right? It's just a document. A project charter, I've said, uh, project uh, planning, I've said, begins with the development of a project charter, which is a description of the project is a document issued by the project initiator or sponsor that formally authorizes the existence of a project and provides the project manager with the authority to do what? To apply organizational resources to project activities. So included in a project charter, there is a project purpose. What is the purpose of the project? What are the measurable object, uh, project objectives? What are the project requirements? What are, the key, uh, what are the key deliverables? How about the overall project risk? Are there any risks involved in the project? Then there's also the summary milestone schedule. Summary milestone schedule. The project should also have a list of the key stakeholders, project key stakeholders, project approval requirements, agree, assigned project manager, and lastly, the name of the project sponsor. Once the charter is in place, which I've said is approved by the project manager, which I've also said um, is or ensures common understanding of the stakeholders and also understanding of the key deliverables, including milestones, including roles and responsibilities and, uh, of everyone involved in the project, then on the basis of the project charter, then the project plan can then be developed. Project management plan. Project management plan. Project planning. So we move on to what we call project management plan. What is a project management plan? Candidates, a project management plan is a document uh, that describes how the project will be executed. It is a document that describes how a project will be executed, how a project number one will be uh, executed, how a project number two will be monitored, how a project will be executed, how a project will be monitored and controlled how a project will be monitored and controlled and also closed how a project will be closed so it is a document just like 
a project charter is a document. The project management plan can be just as at a summary level or, or detailed. And each component plan is described to the extent required by the uh, specific project. So the project management plan candidates should be robust enough to respond to the ever-changing project environment. That's what we call agility. And candidate agility, the agility may result in a, a more information as the project progresses. The project management plan should um, also be baselined. That is to mean it is necessary to define at least the project references for scope, time, and cost. Why? So that the project execu execution can be measured and compared to those references and performance, and that performance can be managed. So it has to be baselined in terms of the cost, the time, and also the scope. So a project management plan, I repeat, is a document that describes how a project, number one, will be executed, number two, it will be monitored and controlled, and number three, how a project will be closed. And it integrates and consolidates all the subsidiary management plans and baselines and other information that is necessary to manage the project. It is also be noted that the needs of the project determine which components of the project plan are needed. So the components will vary depending on the complexity uh, of the project. But I'm here going to list the components of a project management plan. What I list here is not an exhaustive list, but uh, these are just common components of a plan. We have um, scope management plan, number one. Scope management plan. Scope management plan is uh, one of the components that we may find in a project management plan. Scope management uh, establishes how the scope will be defined, how the scope will be developed, how the scope will be monitored, how the scope will be controlled, and how the scope will be valid, uh, validated. Remember we say that a project uh, management plan has to be baselined in relation to uh, scope, time, and cost. So in a project management plan, there has to be a scope management plan which establishes how scope is defined, developed, monitored, controlled, and validated. Then we have requirements. Two, we have requirements a management plan. Requirements management plan. Requirements management plan. Now, a requirements management plan establishes the criteria and the activities for developing, monitoring, and controlling the schedule. And a requirements management plan candidates establishes how the requirements will be analyzed, documented, and managed. Remember we said that uh, in a project charter, 
there has to be uh, project requirements in a charter. So a plan now uh, details how the requirements will be managed, how the requirements will be documented, how the requirements are to be analyzed. Three, schedule management plan. Schedule management plan, on the other hand, establishes the criteria and the activities for developing, monitoring, and controlling the schedule. And this we'll discuss in detail when um, looking at the what we call project organizing. We will see the schedules under the subtopic project uh, organizing. The third component is cost management plan, cost management plan, which establishes how the cost will be planned, how the cost will be structured, and how the cost will be controlled. Five, there has to be a plan on quality. Quality management plan. Quality management plan, which establishes how an organization's quality policies, methodologies, and standards will be implemented in the project. Because we know every organization has its own standards. So if an organization is carrying out a project, within the project management plan, there has to be a component on quality management so that the standards of the organization are implemented while carrying out the uh, implementation of the project. Number six, resource management plan. Resource management plan candidates uh, is a plan that provides guidance on how project resources should be categorized, how the process should, how the resources should be allocated, how the resources should be managed, and how the resources will be released. Because without resources, then projects cannot be implemented. And resources, we know, naturally are scarce. When carrying out a project, then there has to be a plan on resource management. These are physical resources, financial resources, human resources, capital resources, and so on. Number seven, communication management plan. Communication management plan establishes how, when, and by whom information about the project will be administered and disseminated. In implementing a project, there are many uh, stakeholders. You may also have uh, the implementers who may be many project workers. So there has to be a plan on how information will be administered. There has to be a plan on how information will be disseminated, information about the project. So there has to be communication on who does what, when, how, and so on. So there, is, there has to be a proper channel where communication flows in all ways, horizontally, vertically. There has to be a plan clear plan on how information is to be administered and disseminated. Number eight, risk management plan. Risk management plan establishes how the risk management activities will be structured and performed. Will be structured and performed. Number nine, Procurement 
procurement procurement management plan procurement management plan establishes how uh, the project team will acquire goods how the pro project team will acquire services from the outside in order to perform project activities procurement how will the materials needed in the project be procured how will the services that will be needed in implementing the project will be uh, procured so there has to be a plan on procurement of of uh, materials procurement um, of goods procurement of services and so on number 10 stakeholder engagement plan stakeholder engagement plan on the other hand candidates establishes how stakeholders will be engaged in project decisions how they'll be engaged in project execution according to their needs interests and impact remember within the project charter we stated that uh, there has to be a list of key stakeholders key stakeholders these are persons within who has who have interest or a stake in the project they could be the members of the public the workers the manage, the managers project managers the government and so on so how will the, pro, the, the, the project manager engage the stakeholders. So there has to be a plan on how the stakeholders will be reached because these are persons with interest uh, you know, in the project and these are persons who can positively or negatively impact on the success or failure of the, of the project. That people will determine whether the project will succeed or not. So they have to be engaged because each and every stakeholder may have um, uh, interests they may have needs so unless the needs of the interests of the stakeholders are met then the project may not succeed so it's important to have an, a stakeholder engagement plan stakeholder engagement plan then uh, number 11 we can have uh, the scope baseline scope baseline scope baseline now candidates the approval version of this is just the uh, approval version of a scope statement it is just a work uh, what we call a work breakdown structure all right and it is used as a basis for comparison okay scope baseline it is just a, a a work breakdown structure work breakdown structure work breakdown structure w b s that is the scope baseline so that should also be part of a project management plan why? Because it is this structure, work structure, okay? It is this COP baseline that will be used as a basis for comparison. Before the project is uh, commenced, it's important to have a, a project management plan. Within that management plan, there ought to be a scope baseline. It is a scope statement. It is a work breakdown structure. Okay? And it is used as a basis for comparison. So when the project is underway, the, uh, the project manager can come back to the scope baseline structure and see if the project is on course based on the plan. Scope baseline. Then, related to scope baseline, there is 12, the cost baseline the cost baseline 
This is the approved version of the time-faced project budget that is used as a basis for comparison to the actual results. So there has to be in place a cost baseline, which is just a budget, which the project manager can use as a basis for comparison with the actual results. Scope, cost baseline, cost baseline. Then there are additional uh, components like change management uh, plan, change management plan, change management plan. Now, change, a change management plan describes how the change requests throughout the project will be formally authorized and incorporated. Candidates, we've, uh, we'll be looking at uh, the, the topic on uh, change management. We know organizations operate in a dynamic environment. The external and the internal environment is not static. There are always changes in the political environment, the economic environment, the social environment. The technology also changes over time. The future, again, candidates, is not certain. It's not always possible to know what will happen tomorrow unless you have very sharp intuition. Unless you have sharp intuition what we call intuitive knowledge of what will happen tomorrow, then it's not possible to know what will happen tomorrow. So when, before commencing or starting up a project, you need to have a project management plan which should contain change management plan. And the purpose for the change management plan is to describe how changes throughout the project will be formally authorized and incorporated. I've said there could be economic uh, changes, economic changes in the environment. There could be changes in the availability of resources. The company may be projected to have certain resources based on the budget that is developed. But the company may have constraints in, or, 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 or difficulties in raising the resources. So when such changes occur, there has to be a plan on how the changes will be dealt with, how the changes will be incorporated, and how the changes will also be implemented. So there has to be a plan. A plan, candidates, I repeat, is a predetermined course of action. Determine beforehand what you are going to do. What will the company do in case there are changes on, in all these parameters? There could be changes in, uh, in stakeholders. There could be changes in... Uh, maybe even objectives, there could be changes in uh, uh, re available resources, there could be changes in, uh, we mentioned here, approvals, there could be changes, the government can pass laws that make certain activities illegal, there could be changes in the uh, economic environment, the interest rates, there could be changes, in the, even the, pro the project manager can resign. If a project manager resigns, then what plan uh, what is the plan? What is the change management plan? How will the project manager be replaced? So there has to be in place a plan on how these changes will be effected. Change management plan. 14 project life cycle.
Project life cycle can also form a part of the project management plan. In our last session, we illustrated the project life cycle. And we saw that a project life cycle describes the series of phases that a project passes through from its initiation to its closure. So a project life cycle describes the phases through which a project passes from its initiation to its closure. So these are 14 components of a project management plan. And that will mark the end of our today's lesson. What have we learned today? Today, we have uh, defined a project planning. We've also identified the contents of a project charter. We've said that uh, project planning begins with the development of, of a project charter. And what is a project charter? You've said that a project charter is a high level description of a project, which begins with the project purpose, then ends with the uh, approval or authorization of the charter description of the project before planning a project begins then there has to be a document that contains the project purpose the measurable project objectives the project requirements the key deliverables the overall risk the summary milestone schedule key stakeholders project approval requirements assigned project manager and the name of the project sponsor. It is this project sponsor or project initiator who now authorizes the project to commence. Then once the charter is in place, then a project management plan is developed, which you have said is a document that describes how a project will be executed, monitored, controlled, and closed. We've described 14 components of a project management plan. The first one being the scope management plan. Number two, the requirements management plan. Number three, schedule management plan. Number four, cost management plan. Five, quality management plan, seven, six, resource management plan, seven, communication management plan, eight, risk management plan, nine, procurement management plan, 10, stakeholder engagement plan, 11, scope baseline, 12, cost baseline, 13, change management plan, and the project life cycle. I want you to go through the lesson one more time, you go through it another time again, it takes time, go through, write the notes, then you can have, attempt this assignment. This is your assignment. So here is your assignment. 1A, define project planning. 1B, define project charter. Number two, highlight 10 components of a project charter. Number three, describe seven components of a project management plan. Four, explain five purposes of project planning. Thank you for attending today's session. In our next class, we will study project organizing. Bye-bye.